Personally, I drew upon globalisation and world music, but more of the cultural and sociological aspects. I took the quote, Identity crisis within these countries about popularising music but keeping authentic to still keep its roots within its own countries. So basically, the music wants to be loved and discovered, however it can receive artist backlash because it might just not be ethnic enough. Now, westernisation is the assimilation of western culture, the social process of becoming familiar with or converting to the customs and practices of western civilization. In terms of music, it is a music that is changing and converting to sound more like the Western norm, like average American pop rock music. For the sake of my points, I'm going to use West African artists as my example, but let's not forget that this counts for all world music artists everywhere around the world. Now, there are a few positives of Westernization. For one, it can immensely gain an artist's popularity making a West African artist work more Western, it will help make a significant following in Western countries. Therefore, the artist will have more fans. The artist might also be recognized professionally and in the rise of popularity, it might help the artist win awards and get record deals worldwide. What follows this is the popularity of the music itself. The music the West African artist is making will not necessarily lose all authenticity after being westernised. It still may have some elements of sound which are specific to their country's culture. This can start a frenzy in that style of music, almost making it a fad, but still a craze nonetheless. This can do wonders for popularity of other artists and music from that area. This is what I mean by an all-round sound. You could also use the recent rise of K-pop as an example for this. As there are positives, there are also negatives societally and culturally for the artist. The music wants to be loved and discovered. However, it can still receive that backlash because it might not be ethnic enough. The music may be growing worldwide and gaining popularity. However, within the country of its origin, it may be criticised for not staying true to its roots. It can also seem like the artist is mocking its heritage. This can then cause the artist to be pushed out by its country. It can also happen the other way around. Take a white Western artist picking up on trending types of music which originated from West Africa, then making that music and that resembles that. This can seem like it's mocking the heritage, but could also be considered racist. I looked at mediation within globalisation. World music became prominent in the late 1980s as a label applied to popular music originating outside the Anglo-American nexus. According to Murphy, it is transformed via mediation. We hear via entrepreneurs, promoters, managers and other Western artists. This means that the music we hear that we believe to be world music is in fact a version of world music that has been changed to fit westernised cultures and make it more sellable or marketable. A key example of mediating is Afropop, as shown in the point made by Biddle and Knights, the African pop music that we believe to be authentically African is very different from the pop music listened to in Africa. This is due to the mediating process that the music goes through. Just like Biddle and Knight says, that it would be wrong to simply assume that the Afropop marketed in the West as world music is an authentic expression of contemporary popular African cultures. Meaning, as a westernised culture, we can't assume that what we are listening to is authentic to the artist and the culture just because of its marketing label. The impetus for such mediation is not necessarily the result of record company pressure, but can also be the result of the African artist's desire to break into the lucrative Western music mainstream of international pop, says Biddle and Knights. This shows that it's not all down to record companies. Sometimes the artists westernise their own music to try and become a mainstream selling artist, which can seem like they are completely disregarding their culture or original origin of such music. According to a paper written by D.R.M. Irving at the University of Cambridge, it is perhaps suggested that globalisation seems to only have positive attributes, and if a global push of certain cultural practices were to happen, it would mean that diversity would be more widely accepted within the industry. 
It is a common opinion within music communities that any expression within music should be allowed, and the more they connect with, for example, a genre or style, the better. David Puzak wrote a hot paper on hybridity of culture and gave a good example of how globalisation has had quite a large impact on the music world. Jazz music is still to this day known to be a classic genre and an overriding framework of musical expression. And due to it being created out of a culmination of two vastly different cultures, it supports Irving's view that it emphasises difference. That difference being the African-American community during the times when slavery was a dominant issue within America. Jazz, however, is a very open genre, and even though it was created by the black community in the late 19th century, it has continued to grow to something that people of any culture or race can contribute to without much backlash, as there is a very strong, undeniable understanding of its roots and origin. Due to jazz music being one of the founding African-American genres, people tend not to argue with it as it has a very strong stance. For some reason, however, the genre of hip-hop is not taken as seriously by people who aren't part of the African-American community. Rap is being used and appropriated by a lot of non-African Americans due to the globalisation of music and the idea of sales and gaining money through music. This has caused a significant problem within the black community because those who are mixed race but still are African American are not always being respected and considered valid enough to be a part of it, even though it was created by the community in which they are a part of. An article by The Odyssey Online goes into detail about the issues surrounding the genre of rap. So the importance of its origin is being diluted and not spoken about because the idea of creative freedom is being held more important than people's rights to use things of their own culture to express themselves. This point goes against Irving's view, showing that globalisation of music and culture does not always increase diversity, but can in fact segregate people within their own communities. So the final part of globalisation I'd like to touch on is economic globalisation. This is basically the global expansion of business factors, whether that be small local businesses or big, big businesses or even countries through cross-border movements and increasing their interdependence. This can include anything from people, capital, technologies, goods and anything that they can sell, basically. Um, Economies across the world are able to develop massively through globalisation. It's the reason we have access to so much today and we're able to go and buy practically anything that we want if we have the money for it. And it's because of globalisation that economies and businesses are able to meet the demand and sell so much product. One big aspect I would like to touch on is global commodity chains. This is where, you know, products that we buy are more likely manufactured in third world poor economy countries. We know that in these circumstances, workers are underpaid and that part of the business sees very little to no money. Whereas the promotion and marketing businesses, you know, with massive financial backing, you know, take so much profit and are able to make so much profit because of how big they are and we often see this is the case with the more bigger and more powerful economies and businesses are dominating the smaller ones. So how does that link to the music industry? Well we it's a well known fact that artists in the industry find it very difficult to make a living and get a respectable income because of how little they get from so much time and effort that they put into things. They make a product that then goes through a record label and because they have the marketing and promotion and all these big contacts and financial backing, you like it's it makes so much sense to go with them because it's easier to get your music out there. However, you get nothing because they take such a large cut. And that is a great example of local economic globalization. But a positive would be because of economic globalization, you're able to bridge the gap with you know the internet and being able to transport large amounts of copies of your music across the world which allows outside of the UK and America to enjoy your music and you're able to then earn more money and like get a larger fan base from economic globalization which is so important <laughs>